Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can scrape a website for data that you might want. We'll learn how to like save it into a local JSON file, for example. We're also going to learn how to take automated screenshots of any site you want, at any resolution you want, in any browser engine you want. And we'll also learn how to test your website. Uh, like for example, when you click a button, does the result that you would expect to happen happen? All of this can be perfectly automated, so let's jump right into the action. The first thing you're gonna do, or the first thing I'm going to do, is start with a completely empty folder on my desktop so that you can follow along with me. So I have that folder open in VS Code. The first thing we're gonna do is just in the command line, run the command of npm init playwright at symbol the latest version. Go ahead and press enter. It's gonna ask, do you wanna use TypeScript or JavaScript? You can use TypeScript if you want to. Uh, I'm from the Stone Age and I prefer just vanilla JavaScript. It's gonna ask, where do you wanna put your tests? I'll just accept the default value. Do I wanna add GitHub Actions? Uh, for now, no, I don't. In the future, that would be cool. Uh, I mean, then it would be even more automated, right? You could set it up so anytime you push to GitHub to the main branch, like these tests run automatically. But for now, I'm just going to say no, false. Okay, do you want to install Playwright browsers? Absolutely, I'm going to let it do that. Uh, now, if you have a fast internet connection, this shouldn't take too long, but it's going to download sort of headless versions of Chrome, WebKit, and Firefox. Awesome, so mine's already done. Now, let me show you how easy this is to get started. We're gonna dig into the tests folder and click on this example.spec.js file. And by default, it already sets up a couple example tests. Um, you know, they're testing their own website, playwright.dev. Uh, before we modify this or set up tests uh, that we actually wanna run, let me first just show you how to execute tests. So you just go into the command line and you say, npx playwright test. Go ahead and press enter. What's really cool is it's gonna execute those tests in the three main browser engines by default. So Chrome, WebKit, Firefox. Now, if you want to see the results, you can just say NPX Playwright Show Report. This should automatically open in your browser. And let's just start with this first test that's called Has Title. So right away, you can see it's really cool. It ran it in Chromium and Firefox and WebKit. And if we go back to our code, here's that test. It's called Has Title. So literally, all it's doing is it's going to that URL, you know, the Playwright's website. And it's saying that we expect that page to have a title of Playwright. Not very exciting stuff, but we can do better, trust me. The idea though is that you could have 100 or 200 tests and with one command in your command line or you know a cron job or you know a GitHub action, all of them can run automatically. Right now though, let's show you how to set up a custom test. So for example, this is my website and right now I'm gonna set it up so that when I click this button here, I wanna make sure that this modal pop-up appears and I'm gonna test to make sure that choose your plan that this text is visible after clicking, so we can simulate a click event after clicking this button. Let me show you how we would do that. Hey, super quick interruption here. So I love mechanical keyboards, but I've never installed my own switches before until now. Big thank you to Glorious for sending me a review unit of their brand new Glorious Fox linear switches. They just launched today actually. Here's what they sound like. They're made from palm polymer, they're coated with lubricant, have an actuation force of 45 grams, they feel great, they sound amazing. They're the most satisfying switches I've used to date. There's a link in this video's description that you can use to check these switches out on their official website. Thanks again to Glorious for collaborating on this video. Now let's get back to the action. So back in the code, let's just work with this existing test. We can just change the label, you know, instead of the default has title, I'll call it like uh, my modal. All right, and then let's just change the URL that we're going to. So I would just grab that into my clipboard, change that out. Okay, and then below that, I'll await, and then let's say page get by role. Right now I'm trying to essentially get that button. So this blue button right here. So to select it, it's a little bit different. It's not like your typical uh, web browser or Chrome like document.query selector. It, Playwright has its own way of like selecting an element. So we're gonna give it two things. The first is, the type of element, so it's a button element. And then the second argument is getting more specific, like which button are you interested in? So we can say name, and that's just looking for the text that's inside the button, so I'll look for, what is it? So I'll look for C plans, right? Because that's the text that lives inside that button. Uh, now at the very end here, I will say dot nth one, just to make sure that I'm selecting only the very first instance that matches this selector. But now that we have one single element, at the end here, I'm just gonna say dot click so that will simulate the button getting clicked on and then we just change what we're actually expecting 
So instead of testing like document.title to be playwright, we're just gonna see like, is this headline visible? So here's what you would do. Uh, let's get rid of this dot to have title. And for now, you can just leave page in the parentheses. We're gonna circle back to this and select uh, that heading in just a moment. But at the end here, right, pretending that this already selects the element we want, we're gonna tack on and say dot, and we're expecting it to be visible. It's a method we're gonna call. Okay, and now we just need to actually select an element inside here instead of just page. So in these parentheses, we would just say page dot get by role, and then you're gonna give it two things. The first thing you give it would be headline, and then we give it an object to be like more specific. And we're looking for the headline where the text is, or you know, the name property is uh, choose your plan. Whoops, and this red underline is saving me. Instead of headline, it's actually heading. Cool, let's give this a save and test it out. So in your command line, you can press Control C to stop the current task, and then just say NPX playwright test. To see the results, I'll run an NPX playwright show report. Cool, so we see my modal passed in all of the three uh, browser engines. Now let's have it fail on purpose, just to see it in action. Like if we comment out this line that simulates the button click, then this should not be visible, so the test should fail, because we're saying that we expect it to be visible. So if I save that, and just run it again really quick, so what, NPX playwright test, and then as soon as it finishes, awesome. You can see now the my modal test fails. So you see the red X, perfect. So you get the idea. At this point, let's change gears. So we've seen how you can run tests. For the remainder of this video, I wanna show you how you can create automated screenshots of any website you want at any resolution you want. And then after that, I'll show you how to scrape data. For example, like from this Manhattan uh, weather website, we can scrape like the temperature, the humidity, the wind speed, and maybe save that into a local JSON file. Let's start with the screenshots. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of my website, learnwebcode.com. Let's go back into our text editor. I'll press control C down here. And you could include screenshot commands in your test file, but I like to actually create like a totally separate sort of script file in the root of my project. I'll call it like uh, mybrowserscript.js. You could name it anything, I just made that up. Uh, but in this file, I don't need to run any tests that need to be included like in the automated test, uh, like test page results. So in this file, this brand new from scratch file, we can just say const, and let's start by importing uh, the three browser engines, or you know, you only need to import the ones you want, but let's say like Chromium, Firefox, WebKit, equals, and then just pull in uh, Playwright, so quotes, Playwright. All right, I'll create a function, so async function, you can name it anything, I'll call it like screenshots, and then right below that, just actually call the function. Inside the function, I'll say const browser equals await, and then we'll just launch Chromium. So chromium.launch. On the next line, I'll say const context equals await browser.new context. And then we'll say const page equals await context.new page. Now that we finally have page, we can say await page.go to, and then just go to your website. And then we need to await, and this is where you can resize the viewport. So do you wanna simulate 1080p screen, do you want to simulate a 1440p, do you want to simulate you know, like an iPhone or an Android, totally up to you, but you could say uh, page.set viewport size, let's just simulate like a phone, right, so width would be what, 640, height would be 480, all right, and then let's actually take the screenshot, so await page screenshot, it's a method we're going to call, let's give it an object, so path, let's just make up a file name, let's call it like mobile.png. Okay, then let's close the browser. So await browser.close. Let's give this a save and test it out. So in the command line, I would just say node, what did I name it? My browser script.js. Go ahead and press enter. You can see it's already done. And now let's look for that file. Yep, in the root of my folder, there's a mobile.png. Cool, so it worked. However, what if you want it to take up like, or capture the entirety of the page instead of just like what sits above the fold? Well, there's this really cool feature. Uh, let's go back into our code. When we spell out the file name, you can give it another property of full page and set it to true. So now if I run this again down in the command line, and now we check out mobile.png. Let me zoom that in a little bit for you. Uh, but you can see it is the entirety of your page. So this is a really cool way to get a full screenshot.
All right, now you may be thinking, hey, but every time I run this, it overwrites the file name. Like what if you wanted to run a cron job uh, that takes a screenshot every hour or every day? I mean, the options are up to you, but I'd probably just make the file name dynamic, right? So instead of quotes around the file name, I would use back ticks. And then maybe after this, I'd say like mobile dash and then some like a random string of time, like the current month or year or whatever. I'm just gonna say this, I'm gonna say a new instance of date and then call the get time method. This should give us a value in milliseconds that's unique each time it runs. So now if we run our command again, sweet, it generates a new file. You know, you could run it again and it should generate, yep, another file. You get the idea. So you could come up with anything you want. So you can test any browser engine you want. So if you wanted to test Firefox right here, you would just change this to Firefox. And then if you want to change this to like 1080p, Right, and then uh, if I just run the command again. Cool, there it is at 1080p in Firefox. Cool, so from here there's a billion different ways that you could use this tool. Let's move on to something fun. Let's move on to scraping. Uh, so let me just say this right away. I realize that the National Weather Service does have an API uh, REST endpoints. So you'd fetch the data that way. You, you only scrape when there's no API and you have to scrape. Uh, but let's just use our imagination that this does not have an API. How can we use Playwright to access this dynamic temperature value? Uh, maybe this dynamic humidity and wind speed values. Let me show you what I would do. So back in our scripts file, to save some typing, I would probably just duplicate this function that we named screenshots, just to stay organized. And let's call it like uh, get weather data. And then right below it, just call that function. So get weather data. That way I can leave all of this code. It's just boilerplate. And you can even leave this go to, just change the URL that you're going to. So this is the National Weather Service for Manhattan. Paste that in here. Again, in the real world, you would use the available REST API. We're using our imagination that this website doesn't have an API. And so we just wanna fetch it using a headless browser. Cool. We don't need to worry about the viewport size and we don't need to take a screenshot, uh, but we do wanna do something here. We wanna fetch uh, the data on the page. Well, we've already fetched the data. Now we want to access it or, you know, drill down and actually get a specific value. So let's say like const temperature equals, and then I want to select this value right here. There are two different ways that you can do this. Let me show you both ways. So the first way of doing that uh, would just be to right click on it, choose inspect. And I can see that it has a class of my forecast current large. So you could just select that class and then back in your code, say await page.locator, quotes, paste in that selector. Uh, make sure it starts with a period because it's a class. And then at the end of that, after we've selected the element, we want to say all inner texts. That's a method, give it a call. Now that is going to return an array. We only want the first item in the array. So when we're saying const temperature, I'd probably just destructure that with square brackets around it. That way the first value will just be available as temperature. Now, before we worry about writing that to a JSON file down here, just as a test, we could say console.log temperature. Let's give this a save and run the command in the command line. Cool, so it did take a few seconds because it's also taking screenshots, but there you can see the 79 degrees. It'll be different when you're running your test. Cool, now that's one way of uh, selecting an element. Uh, now let's try to select maybe like the humidity value and I'll show you a different way. Sometimes you're not gonna have a very convenient class or ID. Sometimes, let me give you an example like this. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Sometimes there's going to be text on a page um, that doesn't even have a class or an ID. So you're wondering how in the world would I drill down and select this? Here's what I would do. In uh, your Chrome DevTools, I would find that little bit of humidity value here, the, the number and then a percentage. So it's a table cell, right? It's a TD element. Here's what you do. In the Elements Inspector tool, just right click on that TD. It's falling off the edge of the screen, but look for the copy option. Let me actually drag this up so it's not falling off the edge of the screen. When you right click on the TD element and click copy or select copy, there's an option called copy selector. This is super awesome. If you click that, now your clipboard has uh, this really specific lengthy selector. So let's um, let's do this. Let's say const array symbol. Let's uh, grab the, let's call it like humidity equals await and then just page.locator quotes, paste it in. Cool. So we didn't have to go create this manually. This is a super quick way of drilling down, you know, uh, like the nth child here, the nth child there, 
very convenient way of accessing what you need. And then at the end, we'll just say dot all inner texts. Let's give this a try. So after we log the console or the temperature, let's say console.log humidity. Let's give that a save, uh, run it in the command line, see what that gets us. Cool. There it is, 62%. So we've logged it to the console. Now let's try to save it to like a local JSON file. Here's what I would do. Up at the very top, let's just import in. So let's say like const fs equals and then require fs slash promises. So just the default node file system module. And then let's go down back into our get weather data function. So instead of logging those values to the console, let's build our own object. Let's say like const our object equals and then just Let's include temperature and humidity. All right, and then let's just sort of save that to a JSON file. So I would say await fs.writefile. You're gonna give it two things. The first is the file name or the path. So let's just call it like uh, ourweather.json. And then the second thing is the value that you want to live inside that file. So I would just call all uppercase JSON and then the stringify method and then just give it our object. Give that a save and let's run this in our command line. So run our script file. And then we should, should see a new file over in the sidebar. Yep, our weather.json, you can click on it. Beautiful. That is gonna bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my premium courses. Uh, from my website, learnwebcode.com, you can click on curriculum up in the top navigation. My current bundle includes six courses. So you can see uh, full stack to Figma, Laravel, MySQL, React, WordPress development, and just earlier this week, I added my full stack JavaScript course, which covers uh, client-side JavaScript, but also Express, MongoDB, Socket.io, and much more. The bundle also comes with access to an exclusive private Discord chat community. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, take care.